this fella began his music career as a classically trained piano player, but he switched to rock and roll when he met Philatex and Dan Seals. This popular duo shot up the charts to fame in the 70s. Hits like Nights Are Forever Without You, Love Is The Answer, providing the soundtrack for young lovers everywhere. Singing Really Love To See You Tonight, welcome John Ford Coley. <laughs> Figure out whose water is whose. Well, no, no, no. that's straight gin. No, that that was Jimmy's water. Well, I'm not drinking after him. And now this one. Give me this. Man. Oh, wait, no, you know what? I was wrong. That was Terry's water. <laughs> no, that's my gin. We moved, that's your gin. That's my gin. Okay, the one that's yeah. gin is Terry's. Okay, we got it. Man, I'm simple. You got, you're, you're messing me up here. Okay, the the I'm not talking about moving in. I remember when that song came out. There were, there was some confusion as to what. You were saying, people thought you were saying, I'm not uh, talking about aluminum. Uh, I'm not serious. Don't you remember? Yeah. Well, of course you remember. You were there. Well, you know, I have to be give credit where credit's due. I'd like to thank Samuel Jackson and uh, Gina Davis in the film Long Kiss Goodnight because they got in an argument on it and right. they told me what I was saying. So <laughs> I, I appreciate that. It's because I'm not talking about uh, aluminum. Yeah, exactly. It was, uh, okay. That was recorded in the basement. In the basement at Lee Hazen Studio here in Nashville. No kidding. Yeah, long back in uh, what '76 something. Oh wow! Yeah. Great ping pong table in that studio. I mean, it was that's what that's what'll make a good record. It, every time. That and foosball. That's <laughs> foosball. what you need. Now you have uh, you've moved to town. How long right. have you been here? About five months now. Welcome. Thank you. Good to have you. Yes, it's, it is. It's great to be here. It was we. I kept coming back and forth all this time, but. I think probably the clincher is that I've got very small children and I wanted them to be raised speaking proper English. So we Thank came you. back down here. You know what? You just leave them here for a while. They'll be all right. <laughs> we'll take good care of them, I promise. Lots better than they would up there in Canada. <laughs> I'm kidding, 
come on. Great city. As, as you Great can city. tell, he's a bunch of Canadians and Paris. Listen, when you come up to Toronto to do a TV show, they'll be on my side. All right, then. Right. That's fine. Now, you grew up in Liverpool, right? Liverpool, England. Oh, well, that's, that's the hotbed of British Thank rock. You. That was a good place. In the 60s, it was a great place. Do you, do you feel a difference between British fans and U.S. fans? Oh, no, they're all very warm. They're beautiful. Oh, come on! <laughs> no, there is a difference. Yeah, not really. I mean, just fans of music is funny. It doesn't really matter. That must have been wild. I mean, back then when, when the, the Beatles were, you know, the Beatles, yeah. hello. Did, did the, the mania ever get to you? I mean, you guys opened for them. Yeah. Surely there was a little bit of, oh, wow. Yeah, I've got to remember, Gary, there was no real mania when they were at the cabin. They were just a local group. Right. They were the best of the local groups, obviously. Yeah. But uh, there was no real screaming and shouting. It was only when, when they became more famous with hit records yeah. that the screamers got involved. And by then, they'd left the cabin. They weren't there anymore? They, well... In spirit only. Yeah. Now, I found out something about you I did not know. You were in a Sinatra movie. Yeah, I was, actually. None But the Brave. Which one was it? It was the uh, war movie, None But the Brave. None But the Brave. And it was the first and last thing that uh, Frank Sinatra directed. Yeah. So, uh, Clint Walker was in it, Tommy Sands, and uh, uh, Brad Dexter, and a lot of people. Does he have a mic on? I can't. No. <laughs> what he said was, yeah, I was in that movie. <laughs> Yeah, that was me. That was you. You stole my mic. You stole my mic. Oh, here you go. Here, wait. Try that one. There you go. Look at us. We're TBN now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know they always hold mics. Hey, how are you? It's comfortable. That's the offering plate. All right. <laughs> Here's my tithe. Here's my tithe. No, tell us again. You were in a Simon Sinatra movie. I was in a Sinatra movie. We did this in 64, and it was, uh, had uh, Brad Dexter in it and uh, a lot of luminaries. But it was the first and last thing that Frank Sinatra directed. And uh, we filmed it in Kauai, Hawaii, and we were there two or three weeks. And uh, it was a fun war movie. It was about the Japanese and American conflict. Did you get killed? Page 42. Page 42. 42. Bit the dust. Yep. Did you die well? I did die well. Okay. In fact, uh, I had nice blood splots coming out. And I want to tell the folks about this, uh, this CD that uh, you and Terry have here. This is Griffin and Sylvester. Lots and lots of great music on it, folks. You can purchase this at www dot the record store dot com okay and for booking the soft rock soft rock cafe you can go on the web to the pathfinder at mindspring dot com and i can't imagine having a better time than you guys just sitting playing all the songs you know because yep. you know all the songs makes it easy <laughs> thank you guys very very much we got to go away for a second we got a lot more great music coming up stay with us what smash hit by the British pop group The Hollies started out with a long road? We'll be back with Terry Sylvester and the answer when Primetime Country with Gary Chapman continues.